In today's episode, I'll be telling you the story of Carolyn Byington and Gregory Kirk, two people who were snuffed on their lunch breaks. Picture this, you've been at work for a few hours, you're tired, hungry, and just want to chillax for a second, so you decide to go home on your lunch break. Turns out your creepy coworker has been stalking you for weeks and chose to follow you home that afternoon. That's an absolutely terrifying scenario, right? For Carolyn Byington, that was her reality, and sadly, it ended with the discovery of her lifeless body. Here's her story. June 10th of 2019 started like any other day for Carolyn Byington, a 26 year old woman who lived in Plainsboro, New Jersey. Carolyn worked as a market research project manager at a company called Engine in Princeton, which was about a 15 minute drive from where she lived. Now, Carolyn never really went home during her lunch break, but for whatever reason, she decided to do so on this specific day. Carolyn left for lunch sometime in the middle of the day, but when an hour passed and she hadn't come back to the office, her coworkers started to get concerned. And then another hour passed and another, and by 5.57 p.m., Carolyn's coworkers decided it was time to call the police. They asked dispatchers to send officers to Carolyn's apartment for a welfare check just to make sure she was okay. Police officers then headed over to the Hunter's Glen complex and let themselves in Carolyn's apartment. That's when they found her body on the floor. And within 90 minutes, Carolyn was officially pronounced lifeless. During the initial crime scene investigation, officers didn't notice any signs of forced entry and reported that Carolyn's personal belongings were all there, although they were strewn about the room. So I'm guessing this wasn't a robbery if she still had her valuables. She was said to have suffered from blunt force trauma and there were visible puncture wounds on her body that looked like they were from a blade. Most reports say it seems like Carolyn passed away from the severe injuries and loss of fluid. Since the initial search of Carolyn's apartment didn't lead to many leads, Investigators decided to speak to some of the victim's neighbors. The neighbors mentioned hearing faint screams and the sound of furniture being moved in Carolyn's apartment sometime around one in the afternoon. Oh gosh, that's awful. Maybe Carolyn was trying to use her furniture as a barrier method to prevent her attacker from getting to her? Aside from that, Carolyn's neighbors really didn't know much. They said Carolyn was quiet and kept to herself. The only time she was seen around the building was when she traveled to and from work. But when investigators spoke to Carolyn's coworkers, that's when they learned about their lead suspect. So there was a 30 year old guy who also worked at the marketing firm named Kenneth Saul. On the day of the incident, Kenneth took a long lunch break right around the same time Carolyn left for hers. Kenneth told his boss that he was getting some work done on his car, which is why he needed to take a longer lunch that day. Well, come to find out, Kenneth never went to an auto shop on June 10th, and his coworkers mentioned seeing cuts all over his hands in the days following Carolyn's slaying. Wait, wasn't Carolyn snuff the blade? There was probably a bit of a struggle between her and the assailant, which could lead to some marks being left on the perp's hands. And it was a shocking and heartbreaking event for everyone, but something about the way Kenneth was acting just didn't seem right. But here's the real kicker. Apparently, Kenneth asked this coworker out of the blue if it was possible to be arrested based on circumstantial evidence alone. Bro, your guilt is showing. After doing some digging, officers were able to pull footage from a police dash cam that showed a car that looked like Kenneth's traveling in Plainsboro around two in the afternoon. Now, Plainsboro is where Carolyn lived, and while it was fairly close to her and Kenneth's workplace, it wasn't that close for him to casually be in the area while on break. So when Carolyn's body was discovered, someone else's DNA was found under her nails. Samples were taken and tested against Kenneth's, and on August 19th, about two months into the investigation, the prosecutor's office determined that the results could not exclude him as a suspect. With that, Kenneth was put in cuffs and the prosecution began to build their case. He was arrested on August 21st on charges of first degree slaughter and possession of a weapon for an unlawful purpose. When Kenneth was interrogated, he claimed he was innocent and told the detectives that he only saw Carolyn in passing that day. While the prosecution was gathering evidence, they were able to determine through cell phone tower data that Kenneth's phone was pinging in the Plainsboro area right around the time Carolyn was slain. In addition to the dash cam footage previously recovered, detectives were able to obtain Google location data that proved Kenneth was at the Hunter's Glen apartment complex in the days leading up to the tragedy. As if things weren't already looking bad enough for the guy, Carolyn's neighbors confirmed seeing Kenneth around the apartment, most often in the laundry room, in the weeks leading up to the incident. That's when the prosecution theorized Kenneth had been stalking Carolyn for quite some time. If he was obsessed with her, that would probably mean he wanted a relationship with her or at least just wanted her to like him. Maybe June 10th was the day he made his move and it creeps Carolyn out, so the rejection made Kenneth angry and he spiraled out of control. This is just my theory, but it seems pretty legit, right? But this isn't the only lunch break execution out there. In May of 2021, a woman living in Pasadena, Texas, whacked her ex-husband on his lunch break. 
Yeah, it's bad. Right around midday on Tuesday, May 11th, 31 year old Samantha Washington drove to her ex husband's workplace. Apparently, she knew her ex, Gregory Kirk, would come out to the parking lot on his lunch break, so she pulled up that day and waited in her white SUV for over an hour until he came out. But that's not all. She brought their three year old son with her. He was in the back seat the whole time. So when Gregory came out to the parking lot to head to his car, Samantha got out of her car and started to walk towards him. From most reports, it seemed like Samantha basically lured Gregory in by having their kid in the back seat. And then out of nowhere, where Samantha pointed a firearm at Gregory. He begged, please don't, you don't have to do this. But Samantha showed no remorse. She began firing bullets at the father of her children. After hitting him multiple times in the chest, Samantha started walking back towards her car, but turned around one more time to finish Gregory off with a few more bullets. She then got in her car and drove off. When a 911 dispatcher was informed about the crime, they sent medics to the parking lot to tend to Gregory and sent police officers after Samantha. The cops were able to track Samantha's car and they tried to pull her over, but she wouldn't stop. A seven minute chase ensued, but when Samantha crashed into another car, the jig was up. Sadly, Gregory was rushed to the hospital, but he was pronounced lifeless upon arrival. According to his sister, Gregory and Samantha had an extremely toxic marriage. Gregory was a family man through and through, and he really tried to make things work, but Samantha was super abusive. Wow, that's so sad. What happened to both Carolyn and Gregory is downright tragic. For Carolyn, she had her whole life ahead of her, and I have no doubt she would have experienced many successes in life. For Gregory, he was a dedicated father who would have been a great role model and example for his kids as they continued to grow up. Even though the circumstances for both cases were slightly different, these stories both go to show that no one deserves to lose their life because of someone else's terrible actions. Now I'm a bit scared to take a lunch break. Maybe I'll call it a snack break just to be safe.